up everybody. Um, this video is the latest instalment in my journey through the world of Doctor Who. Um, as you all pretty much must know by now, I set myself a challenge uh, a few weeks ago to work my way through the entire series right back from the start in 1963, um, all the way up to the current series. Um, the latest one, I got through an, un an unearthly child uh, a few weeks ago and then started watching this one, which is the second story. Um, this is where the series really starts to get into its stride. Um, you've got the Doctor played by William Hartnell, obviously playing it miserable, crotchety, argumentative. This is just how he was. You've also got the two companions, Ian and Barbara, um, and also his granddaughter, Susan. They land... Uh, on the planet of Scaro. I don't think Scaro is actually mentioned in this, uh, but if you've watched Doctor Who as often as I have and as often as a lot of people have, you know uh, that the Dalek's home planet is Scaro. It's pretty standard sci-fi fare, but it is an absolute barnstormer of a story for saying this is only the second uh, story in the series. Um, as I say, it really starts to get into its stride. I really, really enjoy watching that one. As I said last time, it's not uh, for younger audiences that are expecting CGI effects and all this sort of thing, because it just doesn't happen. Um, it's all sort of cheap sets and all that sort of thing, but it looks really good. It looks surprisingly good, um, especially the Dalek City and the, um, the, uh, the forest, the woodland looks really really good um, they must have spent a small fortune on this one so yeah highly recommended if you've not seen it um, I would I would definitely be watching that one again sometime um, and I'm really really enjoying watching these older stories and I'm constantly surprised at how good they actually are uh, so yeah I would definitely recommend that one if you've not seen it and that one's simply called the Daleks I believe it was known as the dead planet as well um, and that is the one that was remade into this um, in 1965. Uh, I've actually done a review on the website if you want to pop over and have a look. That pretty much tells you all you need to know about, uh, about this one. It was made in 1965. None of the original TV cast are in it. Um, you've got Peter, Cush uh, Peter Cushing was cast as the Doctor. Um, they really, really wanted... Um, a big name in the role of the Doctor. William Hartnell was not known in the States, Doctor Who had never been heard of, so they wanted something that was what you would class as pretty neutral that international audiences would recognise. Peter Cushing was obviously known worldwide for his work on the Hammer films um, and he decided to do this one. Um, they've also changed all the uh, companions uh, you've got Barbara played by Jenny Linden he's now uh, she's now uh, another granddaughter an older granddaughter um, Carol Ann Ford's character of Susan uh, who is a 15 year old on the verge of leaving school um, in the series is actually 10 years old in this one which I assume was done to appeal to younger viewers and uh, you've got Ian played by the intensely irritating Roy Castle. Um, the character of Ian was a, a slightly serious, bit heroic figure in the series and they just turned him into this complete clown, a total buffoon. Um, I, just, I just find him really annoying. Um, he should have stuck to record breakers. I mean, that, that came along a bit later, obviously. Um, I did see him in Dr. Terror's House of Horrors, uh, which I thought he was okay in. Um, there was something else he was in but I can't recall it uh, but in this uh, no I, I really wish they hadn't let's put it that way um, but the film sticks fairly faithful to the uh, to the uh, the series that, that it was based on um, the movie is 83 minutes long uh, the actual TV serial was about three hours um, so they've cut an awful lot out of it and put a few bits in but obviously the production values on the movie were a lot higher um, so you got better sets uh, they built bigger more colorful daleks um, i personally thought this was really good um, i had a bit of a uh, a thing with guy um, who 
who's also a Doctor Who fan, he doesn't like this at all. <laughs> he hates it. <laughs> I thought it was all right, but mainly because um, I watched it many, many years ago. Uh, I think it was on BBC, and I believe it was one summer uh, when there was nothing but cricket on. It was cricket, cricket, bloody cricket all the time. And they had some sort of a technical issue this particular day and decided to screen Doctor Who and the Daleks, which I was absolutely thrilled about um, because I'd never seen it. Absolutely loved it and I've loved it ever since. Um, and this is the first time I've watched this movie uh, in quite a few years and it's surprising how well it holds up. Um, the only issue I probably would have had with it the theme music you'd have thought that have either carried over the original theme which was perfectly good or got Ron Grainer and the Radiophonic Workshop to produce something um, electronic sci-fi type thing instead we've got uh, what sounds like 60s stripper music that's the only thing I can think of uh, that's that's what it reminded me of and that that's that's what we ended up with um, it, it didn't sit right with me. The other thing that didn't sit right with me was the Doctor constantly being referred to as Doctor Who. Roy Castle always calls him Doctor Who. Um, no idea why that was. It, to us, he's just the Doctor and that's it. But um, again, not a bad movie. I thought it was okay. I will definitely be purchasing the sequel to this. Uh, obviously, this went down very very well with cinema audiences it packed cinemas out everywhere it wasn't critically well received at all the critics hated it on both sides of the atlantic um but due to the high volume of cinema audiences they commissioned a sequel pretty much straight away um, and that went straight into production uh, as soon as this one was released and that was daleks 2150 ad invasion earth uh, which i'll be ordering very very shortly um, and I'll be reviewing that one um, alongside the TV series of Daleks Invasion of Earth, which I believe is about four or five stories down the line from where I am now. But uh, yeah, it's, it's not a bad film. Um, I'm sorry, Guy, I do love it. <laughs> I do like it. I know you can't stand the sight of it. I'd be curious to know what you thought of the sequel, whether that fared any better with you. I suspect probably not. Uh, but yeah, that's my thoughts on Daleks Invasion Earth. If you want to know any more about it, I can highly recommend this book which I picked up a while ago. Doctor Who on the Big Screen. Really, really good. Um, I'll, I'll try flicking through it, but you know how this never ever works. But it's you've got, you've got some pictures in there. It's basically the background behind the two movies, how they came about, uh, the production of them, uh, the publicity and all that sort of thing. Um, I've read parts of it. I do intend to read the whole thing before I watch The Daleks Invasion of Earth, um, but I would definitely highly recommend that. Now, after that, I went straight into this one, the third story, The Edge of Destruction. Now, if you'd asked me what was my least favourite Doctor Who story ever, a few years ago, I'd have probably have gone for this one. I tried to get through this one a few times, and found it intensely boring. It's a two episode um, story. It was the third story in the series. It's set entirely within the TARDIS. Uh, it's a hard one to describe. I just, it, it was all dialogue. There were no special effects. Apparently the reason it came about was um, they'd made a story called, or they were going into production on a story, a story called Marco Polo, which was to come after um, the Daleks and there was a two week gap that they had to fill and somebody wrote The Edge of Destruction simply to fill that gap. It had to be a cheap story um, as in not costing very much because Marco Polo the sets on there were quite elaborate with him being set in um, I believe it's ancient China uh, but obviously the Dalek sets and the Daleks were quite expensive so they needed something just to fill a gap and that's where this one came in. Now this time I watched it and I quite enjoyed it. Um, I don't think I've ever managed to get through this before before um, without falling asleep. That's terrible, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I quite enjoyed it this time round. I can't say it made an awful lot of sense, um, but I enjoyed it a lot more than previous. So that is now this box set. If I can find the other one. There we go. The beginning. And that is now complete. I've now got through that lot. 
so I'm quite pleased about that. The one I'm working my way through at the moment is this one, The Keys of Marinus. Thoroughly enjoying it so far, I'm four episodes in, loving it. I should have finished this one hopefully by next weekend, um, and then I'll be moving on to the next story, but I'll give you my thoughts on this one uh, when I've actually finished watching it. But so far, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And I'm really, really enjoying this whole Doctor Who thing full stop. It's great to catch up with the classic stories, most of which I've seen bits of, but not, not all the way through. So it, it's brilliant just to watch them, and I'm constantly surprised at how much I really, really enjoy them. Um, my era is obviously John Pertwee. I love the John Pertwee stories, but I haven't seen very many of the William Hartnell or the Patrick Troughton, and I'm really looking forward to getting into the Troughton years. Um, but that's a little way down the line yet. Um, but we'll see how we go. Right, that's it for today. Uh, that's just a quick uh, Doctor Who update for you. Um, I'll be back again, um, hopefully next weekend or the weekend after, with an update um, and uh, a review of the Keys of Mariners. So if you've enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and also subscribe. That'd be brilliant. Um, and I dedicate this video to Guy Jessup Braithwaite. This one's just for you. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Bye bye.